Welcome back friends. As you can see behind me over here, the leaves have fallen off the trees and when it starts getting cold, that's when your vehicles start to have some battery issues, especially if it's a slightly older battery. So today I'm really excited because I have the Vector battery charger and maintainer. So we're gonna test it on this Chevy V8 Tahoe. So what we need to do is turn the lights on, drain the batteries and see how this works. All right, so here's a quick look at the battery charger outside the box. Now, a few years ago, I tested this one right here. It's worked really well. It's by Die Hard, but they don't make this one anymore. And I can actually hear this one struggling. There's something inside of this one that spins and I can hear it really struggling. So I know it's time to step up to something new. So let's head on over here, get the lights going, and then we're gonna test it out. It's probably gonna be dark by the time we do the testing. Might be hard to see in the sunlight, but we have the lights on. Besides the lights to drain the battery faster, I have this little portable heater right here. It draws 12 and a half amps. So I'm gonna plug this in. I'll do that real quick. You can see the lights dim a little bit. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is give this an hour and see if that drains and if we need to charge the battery. All right, it's been an hour and 10 minutes. The lights right here really dim. The fog lights are completely out. The heater stopped. We'll put the key in, see if it turns over, which I seriously doubt. Nothing. Okay, now we gotta charge it. This will be a good test. Okay, I did read the instructions on this, so let's get it unwound here. That sets up really nice right there on the fuse box. Okay, we're gonna clamp the red one right here to the positive terminal on the battery. And then we're gonna ground this black one right here to the vehicle. There's a piece of steel right here, a little bare metal where the paint's worn off. I'm gonna put it on that. So they do say not to put this right on top of the battery. That's gonna go right there. This is gonna clamp right there. Let's go ahead now and plug it in, see what we have. So at the time of making this video, there's one clip that didn't get recorded. So now I'm actually going back and adding this in. So I wanna show you how you charge it. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. So right now this little icon right here is showing that the clamps are connected to the battery. We're gonna just hit the charge button. There it's beeping and you can see that it's starting to top it off. So just as easy as that right there. So right now, after just running for a few minutes, you can just see it's at about the maybe 35, 40% right there. And we're gonna just watch it till it goes all the way to full. It's pretty slick. All right, so right now it's at the 50% mark and we are right at about 30 minutes. Okay, so now it's been an hour and 15 minutes. Let's take a close up look. We are at right about 85%. All right, so right here you can see a battery voltage button. If you push that, it'll show where the battery is at at the moment. All right. 14.7, I think it'll stay that way for about 10 seconds and then it'll return back automatically. There it is. So now it's back to 6.6 .6 amps, 6.5. So now it's been just over two hours and check this out. It's still not all the way charged. We're at about 85% or so. But if you look at the rate, it's 1.5, 1.6 amps of charging. So it's way down, it's trickle charging. So I think that's the most effective way to fully top the battery off and get the most out of it. So the one thing I'm sure if I disconnected this from my vehicle, it would start and I'd be able to get around, but to be fully charged for the winter, I wanna make sure that's completely topped off to 100%. Okay, so right now, everything's complete. It's at 100%, it says FLO, which is a float charge. That just means it'll keep it topped off if needed. So looks like we're good to go. I'm going to unplug it, then disconnect it. Remove this. Now it's time to go in here and start it. Beautiful. Here's a look at the battery, 78-DLG. 800 cold cranking amps at zero degrees, reserve capacity 110. So this is the Duralast Gold, so I remember spending extra money to get the biggest, most powerful battery I could get. So a smaller battery might charge faster, but I'm guessing this one took longer because of it being the gold standard. 
All right, so check it out. This battery will not turn over. We're gonna try the engine start. All right, so we're gonna set this right here. All right, let's connect this right here. All right, that looks like it's on nice and solid. Along with this right here. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna plug this in. And we're gonna try the engine start in a second. Right here it shows how it's connected. Usually takes about 10 seconds. So if you look right here, you can see where it shows everything's connected properly to the battery. So now we're gonna hit engine start and it has a 60 second countdown that allows the 50 amps to flow into the battery. Then when it gets down to the end, we should have some juice to get it started. Okay, now it shows to turn the engine. Not quite there. All right, we're gonna try it again. We're gonna disconnect it. Wait five minutes. It sounded like it was almost gonna start, but it didn't. Okay, we waited five minutes. We're gonna try it again. Engine start the second time. It's charging the battery, counting down from 60 seconds once again. All right, success. All right, so we're just gonna go through and charge it by hitting that button right there. We're at 12.2 volts on it. So yeah, we wanna have that up to over 14. So we're just gonna let that keep going. There's a couple of advanced features I'd like to show you. The first one is the alternator check. And you first do this under no load. And that's where you're not running any accessories like the radio, the lights, or the heater. And if it passes, you'll see a good indicator icon on the screen. If it doesn't pass, you'll see a warning triangle up above. The next, they recommend that you test it under load, and that's where you're running several items, except for the AC and the defroster. If it passes, you'll see those same icons, or if it fails, same thing. So the other advanced feature I wanna show you is the battery reconditioning button. And you hook this up to your vehicle when it's not running, and when you're not gonna be using it for 24 hours, and after you push the button, it automatically will send a series of electrical pulses to break up the crystalline form of lead sulfate, and then it turns these chemicals into useful battery electrolytes. The charger will stop automatically after 24 hours, and the process can be repeated up to five times. And if that doesn't work and fix your battery, then it's time to recycle it and get a new one. So lastly, I recommend that you thoroughly read through the owner's manual so you're properly using it according to their specifications. All right, friends, so I definitely think the Vector battery charger and maintainer did a great job. There's some nice features on it, but I like that it's very simple to use. And then I also like the way that it's nice and compact in the way that the cable store. If you look at my old charger that's wearing out, there's really no cable management and it's just a mess every time I go to store it. This right here is gonna fit really nice in one of my toolboxes. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to respond. So if you enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this or tool reviews, hit that subscribe button because we've got more videos coming out soon.